So the cardiac cycle is actually really just broken up into two phases. I know it looks complicated, but it's really just two phases. And each of those phases are kind of a mirror image of the other one. So they're not too complicated. There's only one exception, which is atrial systole, which is in diastole. But overall, these are pretty much the same thing. So let me just kind of show you. So initially, the only curve I want you to look at just to start with is going to be this blue curve here. So this blue curve is the only thing I want you to worry about right now. Okay, so we don't get you know overwhelmed. So systole is going to start right here. Okay, so if we look at just the blue curve, here's where systole starts. Remember what I told you, this systole is going to start with the S1 hard sound. The S1 hard sound is going to be from the mitral and tricuspid valve, primarily mitral valve. For the remainder of these diagrams, when you're seeing these um, you know, cardiac cycle diagrams, they're talking about the left side of the heart usually. Okay, And so we're just going to look at the left side of the heart. So mitral valve closes. We already said that started systole. Okay, and you can see it listed here, systole. And so what happens? I, I start systole, and then I have this huge rise in my pressure. Okay, again, this is looking at the pressure in the left ventricle. Okay, so this blue line is the left ventricle. Mitral valve closes, I have this huge rise in pressure. Why is that? Well, I have this huge rise in pressure because we're contracting the left ventricle. When it contracts, there's gonna be an elevation in the pressure. But the pressure rise is extremely steep here. The slope is for one particular reason, because the valves are all closed, right? We just closed the mitral valve and we have not yet opened the aortic valve. You can see up here, the aortic valve doesn't open until this next part of systole. So for that reason, if you think about this, when the mitral valve closes and the aortic valve is still closed, all the valves are closed in the left ventricle. And so there's all this contractility and there's no change in volume. And so that's a huge rise in pressure. And so we see this huge amount of oxygen consumption during this phase. So it's particularly important to remember the highest amount of oxygen consumption is in isovolumetric contraction. Any phase that says isovolumetric is saying that all the valves are closed. That's a fancy way for saying the valves are closed. Okay, and how does this start? If you think about your EKG, it starts because of ventricular depolarization. There's an electrical signal that tells the left ventricle to contract. It contracts against closed valves in isovolumetric contraction that starts from this initiated electrical impulse, right, that generates this huge rise in pressure. Okay, so that's isovolumetric contraction associated with the QRS complex, right, on EKG. Now I want you to look at another curve on here. That's the red curve. This is left ventricular volume. So blue is pressure, red is volume. Okay, see volume. And so look right here. So the volume doesn't really change when we're in isovolumetric contraction. So the volume is not changing because the valves are all closed. Okay, now when we go into this second part over here, this is gonna be the ejection phase. So now you can guess what's happening. The valve is now opening. So the aortic valve opens. Once this opens, that triggers the next step in our phase, which is gonna be ejection. Now, when does that valve open? This, if you look at this gray line, this line represents the aortic pressure. You can see that this whole time, the aortic pressure is much greater than our blue line, which is our ventricular pressure, right? Our left ventricular pressure. But once we went through isovolumetric contraction, the left ventricular pressure exceeded the aortic pressure. And now once that left ventricular pressure exceeds aortic pressure, that will cause the aortic valve to open. And then we'll start ejecting blood. And that's when we're in the ejection phase, when the left ventricular pressure exceeds the aortic pressure. Okay, and again, begins after opening of the aortic valve. Initially, there's a rapid ejection phase where we have a whole bunch of blood that we're ejecting through the left ventricle. Okay, that's as, this val that's as this pressure continues to go up from the contraction. But eventually what will happen is we'll reach a point where we'll start to decrease left ventricular pressure. We'll still be ejecting blood. Okay, so you can see we're still ejecting blood as this pressure comes down. It's just that we've already reached our peak. So this side of the ejection is the rapid ejection phase. This side would be the reduced ejection phase. The rapid ejection phase is going to have the most negative slope in the left ventricular volume. Oh, and the last thing I wanna say is, just remember this right here, this little squiggly line is representing your S1 heart sound, which is gonna happen when that mitral valve closes to start this whole process. And the last thing I wanna say here, you can also see this kind of peeking through. You also have your T wave. Okay, so your T wave, which is gonna be ventricular repolarization. It's gonna happen after we depolarize, 
We're going to go through ventricular repolarization. That's going to usually happen. The most of the T wave is going to happen right before diastole. You'll get a little bit of this in diastole, but that's the general concept. Okay, so now when we go to diastole, like I said, it's the same thing. You have relaxation and filling, just like we had contraction and ejection. So the same concept applies. Once the left ventricular pressure gets lower than the aortic pressure, what's going to happen? The aortic valve closes. Now again, all my valves are closed. So now we're relaxing with all the valves closed. So what's going to happen to the left ventricular pressure? It's going to plummet because we're not contracting anymore and all the valves are closed. So my left ventricular pressure now is coming down, down, down. And eventually when it gets under the left atrial pressure, the mitral valve will open, okay? Because now the left atrial pressure is higher than the left ventricular pressure. So this phase, this relax isovolumetric relaxation is really just the opposite of isovolumetric contraction. Again, on both sides, all the valves are closed. Now there's also this additional finding here, which is the dichrotic notch, which is this kind of notch here that you see in the aortic pressure, okay? And so that notch essentially is, represents this slight increase in pressure in early diastole that corresponds to closure of the aortic valve. It's kind of like this back pressure, okay? So just something that comes up occasionally is that dichrotic notch that you see right here. And that's gonna happen after the aortic valve closes. Now, I also want you to remember that this is the phase when coronary blood flow is going to peak, particularly in early diastole. Again, now we're in diastole, right? Because we've already contracted and now we're relaxing. And so now we're in a phase where eventually we're going to start to fill. But remember that the coronary blood flow is going to peak in early diastole. Normally, we can't provide the coronary blood vessels with uh, blood flow during systole because the contractions are going to pinch down on all those vessels and prevent them from perfusing the coronary vessels. So again, coronary blood flow, remember, peaks in diastole. If the time for diastole is shortened because the heart rate goes up, right, that can actually cause ischemia or it can decrease filling into those coronary blood vessels. So people that have atherosclerosis or are already maximally dilating those vessels, they're not able to kind of accommodate increases in heart rate. So when people with atherosclerosis of their coronary arteries, when they exercise, right, the, the faster heart rates decreases diastolic filling time. Time, so there's not enough time to fill those coronary vessels, and so they get angina or ischemia to those regions of the heart. Okay, so let's talk about ventricular filling. So this begins after opening of the mitral valve. So you can see here, mitral valve opens, and then we're going to start to get uh, ventricular filling. So you can see the volume in the left ventricle is starting to come up here. Now initially, you can see that there's a rapid phase, just like when we talked about ejection. In filling, there's a rapid filling phase, and there's also a reduced filling phase, okay? so. Uh, rapid filling phase, reduced filling phase, very similar to what we talked about. And then the S3 heart sound that we've already discussed, again, is going to happen in early diastole, and early filling, right? When we get all of that blood kind of moving into the left ventricle right away, that's going to cause that S3 gallop that we spoke of earlier. So that would usually be somewhere in this kind of region over here as this ventricle starts to kind of uh, completely fill and we get some tensing of the chordae tendineae. Finally, the last phase on here is going to be the atrial systole. So this is what I was saying. This is the only part that's not really symmetrical be between systole and diastole is this atrial systole phase. And so remember, this is at the very end of diastole. We're going to have, you know, most of the filling has already occurred. You know, most of the blood in the left atrium is going to move into the left ventricle. But just to get out, you know, additional blood, what we do is we contract that left atrium to eject any remaining blood that we can into the left ventricle. So again, this happens at the very end of diastole. And if we have a stiff non-compliant ventricle, this particular point in the in diastole will generate the S4 heart sound, which would typically be somewhere in this region, although it's not really depicted on here. The one curve we really haven't talked about on here is this left atrial curve on the bottom. So this atrial pressure curve. And you can see that this A here on the atrial pressure curve is representative of the atrial systole phase. So that bump in pressure is from the atrial contraction. Okay, and you can actually see a little bit of it here as well in the ventricular pressure curve.